to another edition of Dingus versus Wild. I'm now joined here by my friend in diving and underwater filmmaking, Dave Gersh. Welcome to the show, mate. Thanks, man. Always good to be here. <laughs> We've done a lot of video projects up in Exmouth in the past, and I actually ran into you down south over summer, and I took you on a dive on the Bustleton Jetty where I work over the summer. There were some things that were kind of weighing on me, some fishing practices that I, um, that I, I felt were a bit unfortunate down there, and um, you, we seemed to be a very similar mindset on that, didn't we? Yeah, when I came out of the water, or even before that, just going on the jetty, I told you, man, we gotta, let's do, let's, let's just, let's do something about this, because obviously, I mean, we, there's, there's, we can do something, like we're good at making videos, let's just make a video, um, and at least maybe try and uh, get other people to, you know, understand a bit better in what's happening, because uh, we realized that's probably the main issue of like why this is happening is because people are just unaware, really. When you're a fisherman and stuff like that, maybe you, you don't really see what's going on below. You can't see like the all the fishing lures and fishing lines that are entangled down there. Mm -hmm. And it's just like a, sure. a general understanding kind of thing. Yeah, and yeah. there's like a big fear of sharks down there. But yeah, I mean, the small sharks you find under and raise under the jetty are really not like... Yeah, especially that they're like, they're important for the ecosystem there too. You yeah. Know? There's a reason they're there. It's, yeah. they're, they're small because they probably can, you know, grow around that area and then go out into the bigger ocean when they're bigger as well so yeah um, yeah we would like to make a bit of a difference at the very least I suppose our goal would be to just just make people aware that are less aware of like the damage yeah. that's being done and um, as far as like fishing garbage and this kind of yeah. thing when you have hundreds of people that casting lines on, on the jetty that's just that nothing about that could be justified as sustainable could it you know yeah, no. So at the very least, like make people aware aware of, of what they're doing, make people think twice before cutting their lines and things like that. And at best, what we could do is increase the marine sanctuary to encompass at least the dive platform for the safety of the divers. And not only that, just to, I mean, it's 150 meters of marine sanctuary on a 1.8 kilometer jetty. Yeah. You know, it could be a bit more equitable with our, with our marine sanctuary versus fishing zone. Yeah, we? yeah, it's a great example, I think. It's a small representation of a lot of other places in the world. If we can't keep fishermen out of this one very spe specific marine sanctuary zone, mm. how are we going to be expected to to have sustainable fishing in areas that are less patrolled? You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, for sure. like I've I've seen a guy spear a cuttlefish on scuba under the marine sanctuary within the marine sanctuary. Yeah, right. While I was taking divers, and so we've had lots of problems with that in the past. Uh, people casting into what the dive platform essentially yeah yeah um, people getting hooked on their wetsuits when I'm trying to take discover scuba divers diving people who've never been scuba diving before yeah yeah they're going for a dive it's a lot of responsibility on me and obviously a safety issue for them if they get hooked by a fishing line mm -hmm. um, and yeah just lots of fishing tackle ends up under the marine sanctuary so shall we take a look at the video yeah without further ado here is our uh, video on the Bustleton Jetty entitled reality is underwater So we're here in the sleepy town of Bustleton in the southwest of Western Australia, home to the Bustleton Jetty, the longest timber piled structure in the southern hemisphere at 1.841 kilometers long. The jetty acts as an artificial reef and is a home to a great abundance and diversity of marine species like uh, marine mammals like dolphins, uh, small sharks and rays, uh, octopus, squid. Uh, a great diversity and abundance of fish and um, also the pylons are a home and a very good place to grow your soft corals and your sponges uh, and also the jetty axe is a great refuge for seabirds as well and of this 1.841 kilometer long jetty only about the last 150 meters are a protected marine sanctuary and as soon as you enter the water you can see a really stark contrast between the protected marine sanctuary and the bit that's not protected where people can fish in that. The colors in the marine park are very vibrant and beautiful, like the soft corals and the sponges are, are really thriving there. And then as soon as you cross over that barrier, um, yeah, everything becomes very bland and there's not a lot of fish there, right? And then when you come up topside, uh, when you walk uh, the length of the jetty, uh, as you're walking uh, to the end, there's it's kind of riddled with with squid ink and, uh, and blood from fishing. And there just seems to be a bit of a gap between like the attitudes of the community and the reality of what the underwater world actually is. Uh, people that spend most of their time on the surface don't 
really seem to to understand how their actions are, are fully affecting uh, the underwater environment here. For instance, when I walk up and down the jetty, many times fishermen have stopped me and, and almost bragging, like really proud that they've fished and killed a shark um, and not even to eat just because they thought they were protecting the community from the grave threat of shark attacks. And I totally understand where these attitudes are coming from. As soon as you walk up to the jetty, you see a big shark safe swimming zone right offshore. As you walk down the jetty, you see signs that tell you it's a shark safe area and all these things. So the issue here really seems to be the divide between people's perception and the reality of what's actually underwater. Even diving in the sanctuary, it's not rare for me to pick up 10 or 20 fishing lures on a dive. Um, there's, there's heaps of fishing line that ends up getting cut uh, and left down there and sometimes makes it into the marine sanctuary. The best thing I've seen under the jetty is probably octopus hunting at night. They use your torches and they, they go from bami to bami and dig their legs and all their tentacles up and everything. They're looking for all kinds of, all kinds of critters to eat, things like that. And so just how, how active they are at night and how expressive they are changing colors, it's, it's really amazing. The worst thing I've seen is definitely a shark cut in half and killed and left right at the bottom of the dive platform, right where we dive. And that's really tough to see when something is killed not to eat or anything like that, but just strictly to, to kill it. In fact, I've been hooked when diving from the platform. I've, been hooked by a fisherman in my wetsuit and which obviously shouldn't happen and the solution for me would be to just push the marine sanctuary a bit farther back. I would say most people come here not for fishing but to see the underwater world here. There's actually an underwater observatory here so anyone can go below the surface and see what the underwater world is like even if they're not a diver or a snorkeler. We want to probably have a bit more equality between the the fishing and the people who who enjoy tourism in another way, who so enjoy the underwater world. And anything that we can do here to expand the services offered here that allow people to either go underwater and explore the underwater world themselves or go into their observatory and, and actually see what's down there is going to help educate people. Um, they're gonna think twice about cutting their line if they're fishing. They're gonna think twice about killing sharks and they're gonna see that the reality is not what we see from the surface. The reality is what's underwater.